what's up uh, I didn't really like the first this is me video that I made uh, in which I was trying to introduce myself more to people who don't really know me that much uh, I felt that it was kind of rambling and it, I was not really concise so um, I thought that in this time where we're all in quarantine and can't really go much of anywhere or make a or I can't really make a vlog um, I thought this would be a perfect time to remake that video and and tell you guys really who I am in a more um, concise and less up to the imagination approach. My name is Cadian Kurt Donovan McGaw Jr. as my full name. So I have Cadian McGaw as my um, professional name and as my name that I would put for uh, if I were to be acting or, or modeling or, or something of that nature and I have Kurt Donovan as my musician name as my artist name uh, I was born in summer New Jersey and I kind of I kind of moved around a lot in my life uh, I, I went from Summit to East Orange New Jersey to Orange and then uh, currently in Jersey City and I've been in Jersey City since 2012 a lot of people from Jersey kind of I feel like kind of bash it and kind of like disrespect it in some form or fashion but I always hated that like I've always I've always really loved New Jersey and Jersey City and uh, I can always consider it my home and I definitely never see myself leaving Jersey uh, if you couldn't tell I'm biracial uh, both my parents are actually biracial uh, and my dad is also Jamaican so I am a biracial Jamaican male. I am 19 years old, and I've kind of I kind of see it as though I've kind of had somewhat of a rebellious nature to myself my whole life, um, in terms of just seeing things for what they really are and not allowing you know just whatever to happen without putting up some form of a fight against it. That's why I've always kind of been a person who's uh, been so adamant about fighting against uh, discrimination and oppression and I've that's why I've kind of idolized figures like uh, MLK and like Malcolm X and Colin Kaepernick and even um, Huey Freeman from the Boondocks. That stems from all forms of life really, uh, from when it comes to uh, Black Lives Matter to feminism to uh, LGBTQ communities. Um, and I even, I even like really, I really like what PETA is doing. And I'm just, I'm just kind of so adamant about quality for everybody and, and justice for all people in all walks of life. That rebellious nature has also stemmed from um, things like school. I've always kind of had a, a hatred for school actually. It's something that I've, I've, always, I've always had and that stems from really what I, I had to go through in school and how I really felt about it. And really the reason for my for my hatred has always been how people made me feel about my notions about school and my ideas about what really is the problem. And I've always seen a problem with me going all the time and having to learn about things that I had no interest in. People always made it out to be that I didn't want to learn about anything in school and I just wanted to just sit around all day and just twiddle my, <laughs> fill my thumbs, you know? But that's not the case. I've always had interest elsewhere. I, I have always loved acting and I loved modeling and I love film and music and 
these are things that I love to learn and I love to do and that's what I want to do in my life and a lot of the time the teachers would minimize what I would like to do and tell me that this is what I need to do and really a lot of the time it just it just messed up it just messed with my my emotions and it just it just messes with my how I feel about myself even because uh, a lot of people so many people in in school will make you feel like you are are really ignorant and you are the dumbest person in the world if you get bad grades or don't try as hard as others do when in turn I always felt like this is where certain people's values lie and this is this is this doesn't measure your intelligence it's all about effort for me it's everything's effort everything is grind everything is how hard you try that goes without saying I, I don't I never thought that school was inherently bad for all you know of course people very much need school if, if that's your path if you want to be a lawyer or a doctor then there is no way around it you you must go to school you must you must learn those things but I've always seen it as though um, for what I want to do I, I don't necessarily see it as a necessity my motivations and my effort and my grind lied in areas that I wanted to pursue in my life and that I cared about I firmly believe that everybody could be a straight A student in school if their effort lied there, which my effort didn't lie. And I've always just felt like a lot of it was a waste of time. And uh, I only see it as a waste of time because of what I was forced to learn and what I was forced to study. I was always really the kid in school who didn't really have a lot of friends didn't really pay much attention and would always sit in the back of the class on my computer and uh, learning about film, learning about music, learning about fashion, you know, because that's where my interests lie. A lot of people always told me that I would be great in a performing arts high school. I probably would have. Probably if I went to one of those, I, I probably wouldn't have the same hatred that I do now but you know a lot of it is just, just lies where the values are I remember um, I remember one time I was in math I was in a uh, math class in high school and I was asking my teacher when am I gonna use this in my life when am I gonna apply this to the things that I want to do and she asked me what I, what do I want to do and I told her I wanted to, I want to act, and I want to model. I want to make music. And she kind of uh, put it off as a, a pipe dream. That's what she called it, a pipe dream. I'll never forget it. She called it. You need to put your mind to something more realistic, and stop focusing on pipe dreams. And. This is like, I can't stress enough how much my hatred and my anger lies in that statement sums up really where it lies. The statement of the idea that you are boxed into a certain category of which you can only do certain things. And I see people do extraordinary things. That was always my feelings of of school. I always felt boxed in. I always felt ignorant and I always felt like there was no other way when there is. Once again, I don't oppose school for all people. Of course, it's it's great for the majority of people. But I feel as though for the people who are outsiders and the people who strive for different things, 
that's not the only way. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just it's just a matter of different paths. And I feel like this is my path. And that's why I've opted to not go to college and pursue what I want to pursue. And nothing is gonna stop me from getting to where I want to go. So let me t let me tell you about what I want to pursue. First and foremost, my 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 real first love uh, is acting. I've I feel like I've always really I've acted for a long time. I've acted for my entire life really. I always loved to play different characters and portray myself as somebody else and do it as realistically and as authentically as possible and do that for a f do that for a film and see myself on a film and see how my character is portrayed I always loved it you know that's why I've um, that's why I researched so heavily into film um, when I was in high school that's all I did I researched film and I studied storytelling and cinematography and directing and uh, subliminal messaging in, in all facets of film uh, so film you know writing films directing acting uh it's really been my my true love and it's been my my uh my first love and it's always been my passion so i really want to go extremely far in that field and and make my own films and make my own uh, shows and act in a lot and lots of films. That's that's really the main thing that I'm pursuing. Uh, the second thing that I'm pursuing is modeling. Um, I, I feel like modeling has has been as prominent in my life as acting and has been really one of my first loves as well. And um, I've been doing it as long. Uh, it kind of, for me, I kind of grouped them both together in, in terms of uh, putting myself out there and really striving to, to make it somewhere and make it big in that field. I always felt like modeling and acting are somewhat similar in terms of auditioning, in terms of uh, applying and, and, uh, and going out for, for the roles. Uh, so all throughout high school, modeling and acting was really my thing and really the thing that I pursued heavily and tried to get my foot in the door and uh, lay the groundwork down for when I do get out of school and so that I could have, I could smoothly uh, just keep going with it and try to to get farther and farther. I also group uh, fashion into modeling because um, I did study fashion and I did, I do want to pursue making my own fashion and, and modeling it and have other people model it as well. So I do group fashion in, uh, in, into modeling. My third pursuit in life is music. Um, music is kind of a, it's kind of a odd journey for me from where I started to where I kind of am now and where I want to go. You know, when I first when I first tried to get into the music industry, it kind of it wasn't at all for to be an artist. It was kind of more along the side of engineering and and uh, being a manager really. Uh, the first I still have it, the first um, music equipment that I ever bought it wasn't even for me. Uh, it was for my friend Joey and um, it was kind of to really kickstart and kind of push forward into what he was trying to do and help in any form or fashion. And in turn, by doing that, kind of sparked my curiosity and my drive into trying it myself. I always, I always wrote and tried to make music and it's kind of it kind of evolved incredibly over time. I felt like when I first started, I was god awful, and I had no real values in where I what I wanted to do with my music, or I wanted to say, or what I wanted to uh, to get across. 
what I want to do is more laid out and concise and what I want to come what I want to get across is is a lot more personal and motivational everything I want to do in music is is different and it's bring something new to the table. I always loved hip hop music and rock music as my favorite genres, uh, aside from other genres in which I love, but those two genres are really my favorite. And I see it as though I want to com combine that genre along with other genres to really make a subversion of music and a subversion of genre, really, so in which you can't put the music into one specific genre. You know, a lot of my influence in music stem from hip hop artists that have a have a message and really have something to say. Like my favorite artists have always been J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar and Jay Z, you know, people who really have a message and something to say and have lyrics that transcend people's emotions and, and people's ideologies. And that I you know, I take that those factors and combine them with my my favorite rock artists, uh, such as my chemical romance, Nirvana, Rolling Stones, and combine those to which it's a subgenre. And what's really beautiful and what's really powerful of the subversion of genres and the and the blending of genres is that it's a combination of not only genres but of races as well. It's it's integration. You know, when I was growing up and when I was in high school, um, music and genres are really split on upon races. I would see it as though rock music was exclusively popular amongst the, the white kids and and hip hop was most popular amongst the, the black kids. So what's really beautiful about combining hip hop and rock is it is it integrates people. You would see a new generation of kids who are more integrated within each other and listen to the same things and are interested in more of the same things and less of a break and less of a separation. You have something that every race enjoys and that something that every race sees a part of themselves and that every race relates to and likes. So yeah, that's really the three things that I am strongly pursuing in my life and I will make something out of myself in those things. And I have no doubt in my mind that with the hard work that I put in and that with with the talent that I believe that I have for these things that I will make myself out of out of these things. I will I will do something incredible in these fields. And I believe that anybody who has a genuine love and care for the things that you believe in, you can achieve them regardless of what anybody says, regardless of what anybody thinks, regardless of what anybody tells you. You can do amazing and incredible things in this world because I've seen people do it and I know that it is possible. All you have to do is want it that badly and pursue it that hard. So that's the philosophy that I go by and that I live by and I preach is simply just putting in that effort and having talent and making it happen. You know, I just kind of never enjoyed the idea of living a life that I hate doing something in my life every single day that I don't enjoy. You know, I, I don't see the point in that and I don't see I don't see why I would do that. And a lot of the times people would tell me that the things that are practical 
about the things that I can achieve and the things that are practical that I have to do in order to live any any sort of life that's that's more than being homeless or being a failure. But I just I just never believe that, and and I will never believe that. And I was always I feel like I was always destined to do the things that I love to do, the things that I can make a significant impact in. And that's what I'm going to do. No one ever really pushed me to do the some of the things I have genuine interest in now. So that's kind of why I'm sort of late to being good at some of the things that I, I, I love to do right now. You know, as it would, most people, or a lot of people when they're uh, my age are, are significantly well at doing some of the things that I love to do, such as skateboarding and playing the guitar and the drums and uh, amongst other things, which I am incredibly mediocre at. All of these people have been at the stage that I'm in in terms of these things, so I just see it as in due time, everything comes into combination. You know, I may be pretty mediocre at skating and playing guitar, but in due time and in practice and in effort and grind, I will be at where I want to be. And also, what I did also study in school that I, st I took upon myself to study is art and the idea of art and the concept of art. And that's why I consider myself an artist. And I take and I consider everything I do as art. And I even I even dabble in, in painting and drawing and I love art. I have art all over my <laughs> all over my room. As a matter of fact, let me show you let me show you my room. So this is my room. I have a uh, I have a loft bed. People a lot of the time people um, misconstrued it as a bunk bed, but it's actually a loft bed. It has a bed on top and a uh, couch on the bottom. Uh, so this is one of the pieces of my art that I have. I, everything I have is is Basquiat. Everything's Basquiat except for I have one. Um, Andy Warhol right here. Uh, I really love Basquiat. So this is my computer, my light, my keyboard, uh, my TV, my Xbox. I'm an Xbox kind of guy. Uh, this is a Colin Kaepernick painting. Um, this is the first. Um, this is the first recording setup that I ever bought. Um, for my friend that I use now, uh, I put some soundproof stuff on my wall. That's my guitars, uh, my clothes and stuff. This right here is my plaque for my award, a short film award that I won in 2016 that I did with my friends. Filmmaking has been my life. This is a catalog from a modeling job that I uh, got from a suit company that I did a couple years ago. As you can tell, my room is pretty clean and neat. I always love to have my things neat. I'm super, I'm super fucking OCD. So you'll never catch me having messy shit. Yeah, that's just, that's really who I am. I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty chill guy. I'm a pretty cool, calm and collected guy. Who just likes, who just has firm ideas about what I believe in and has a huge heart. You know, I always see myself having a huge heart and I want to take what I earn and take what I'm blessed with and give to people who are in need and help people in the world. Spread positivity. For a long time I've been I've been depressed and 
that's that's a that's a that's a it's a really dark place in my life and it's really it's something that I don't want anybody to feel and I certainly don't want to feel it. People misconstrue it as me wanting to feel it, me wanting to show it as a cool thing or as something that's that I glorify. But in no form or fashion do I condone being depressed. It's not something that you want to feel. It's not something that I want to feel. But I just feel it. You know, I just have that feeling and and I kind of I want to make a lot of things, uh, including my music, that help people who feel that way get through it and overcome it and ease the pain. Because there's a lot of people who I listen to and who I idolize who have helped me ease a lot of the pains that I've felt in my life by showing that I'm not the only one and that it gets better. Depression is nothing that you want to be. It's nothing that you want to feel. I've, I've felt, I've literally been in so much of a dark place that I've, even in happy times, I've been sad. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's hard and it's rough. And it's, a, it's become a big part of my life. I show it and I talk about it because it's who I am and it's what I feel and it's what goes on in my life so I just want everybody who maybe not depressed maybe just feel sad sometimes and feel down or, or alone sometimes or not loved that you are more than your feelings and you are more than what you, what may happen to you and the best way to think of things is even in the worst circumstances that you can live in somebody is somebody would die to be in that predicament and you are blessed and you are loved and you can get over it you can overcome anything and you will get over anything. And then the most cruel and ugly and dark circumstances there there is beauty. And there is amazing and beautiful things that happen in this world. And there's beauty and grace inside of you. And you are an amazing person who is capable of doing amazing things. And the broken are the more advanced. up in my house for the last five days but I got some new lights and it's a party in my motherfucking room you know what I'm talking about